Good evening, and we begin with breaking news in the case of a Vancouver mother and daughter missing and later found dead in Clark County. Her ex-boyfriend, already a person of interest in the case and in custody, is now being charged with two counts of murder. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. This, as the community continues to mourn the deaths of Nishe Melendez and her seven-year-old daughter, Layla. Kylie Boshi's in the newsroom looking into today's developments. Kyle? Today's charges come after the medical examiner confirmed that Misha and Layla died from gunshot wounds. Vancouver police say the bullets matched the gun belonging to Kirkland Warren. He was named a person of interest when Misha and Layla went missing. Warren was first arrested earlier this month after police say he shot at Misha in her apartment in December of last year. He was able to post bail. Just days later, the two went missing. Police rearrested Warren for violating the protective order. During a search of his vehicles, investigators found a gun, blood in front and back seats of his car, Miche's purse and children's clothing that matched what Layla was wearing. It wasn't until last week that police found the bodies in a rural area of Washougal. According to the probable cause affidavit, investigators also analyzed Warren's cell phone. GPS on the phone shows he was at the precise location where the bodies were found. Warren is in the Clark County Jail without bail right now. He's also awaiting trial for a murder in Arkansas. And so many more questions in this case. Thank you, Kyle. A suspect is in custody this afternoon, charged in two brutal attacks and robberies in downtown Portland. Earlier today, police released video of one of the attacks, along with pictures of the suspect in hopes of finding him. And now, 34-year-old Harold Griffin III is charged with multiple felony counts connected to the crimes. Our Tim Gordon joins us here in the studio with that story, Tim. And Laurel, these attacks happened in mid-March. Now Griffin is charged with robbery in the first degree, assault in the second degree, and other charges. Now our story contains the video of what police say Griffin did in the first incident. We want to warn you, it shows an attack that is disturbing and may be hard for you and your loved ones to see. It was a horrible attack caught on the security cameras of this coffee stand at Southwest 5th and Salmon in downtown Portland. We again want to warn you, the video is disturbing to watch, but the victim survived after being treated at a local hospital. So here it is, the suspect hitting the man with a golf club, and then while he's down, he takes a cup of hot coffee and pours it on the man on the ground. After that, he kicks him in the head and steals his backpack. It just sucks that he looks pretty well off and sucks that he's like... Hurting people. We showed the video along with the still images of the suspect to a young man who works downtown. Yeah, I mean, I hope we find the guy. Definitely. Yeah, I work right there, so I'll have to keep a tight wash on the front door. From the attack that happened at 5th and Salmon to several blocks north at 5th and Burnside, police say the same suspect attacked another man here the day after the first attack. That victim was found unconscious on the sidewalk with injuries that sent him to the hospital. He'd also been robbed. We really focus on every situation being different, but you you have this kind of toolbox of, of things that you can reach into. Sarah Berkmeyer teaches self-defense courses with the city's community safety division. The victims in these cases may not have had a chance to react, but if you do, Berkmeyer says, trust your instincts, then first things first. If you see somebody that's really escalated or upset about something, you're not sure kind of what direction it's going to go. Gain distance, physical distance from that person. He was carrying a golf ball. A woman I spoke with is concerned on a couple of levels. She lives and works in the city core. So I'm walking downtown all the time and uh, I, I'm concerned about safety, not only for myself because I feel like I have street smarts, but for people that don't, it's blocking or, or inhibiting our uh, revitalization of our downtown. Now, Griffin was actually arrested this morning after police were called to a disturbance at Southwest 4th and Washington downtown and recognized Griffin. But detectives say at the same time they were getting reports of him in that area thanks to community members seeing his picture in the news. Police thank the public for the help. David. Thank you, Tim. Well, this evening, new data from the CDC shows gun violence in the United States got worse during the pandemic. According to the study, injuries from gunfire rose significantly in 2020 and 2021 compared to 2019. The largest proportional increases in injuries among children younger than 15. 
While gun injuries dropped in 2022, they still remained 20% higher again nationally than in pre-pandemic years. A previous study also found gun homicides increased in the pandemic. Experts say a variety of factors, including a rise in firearms purchased, more time spent inside homes with guns, and mental health struggles during lockdowns may have contributed. We have a more in-depth look at those numbers up for you now on KGW.com. A North Portland woman was stunned to learn her stolen car was involved in a crash on Tuesday night. The sheriff's office says a man was driving the stolen Kia SUV when he tried to evade deputies and caused a multi-car crash on I-405, injuring himself and three others. Lauda Lacayo Gilman says her Kia Sorento was totaled. She says it's the fourth time a car of hers has been stolen from outside her North Portland home over the last two years. This time, she's upset with Hyundai and Kia for not fixing issues with car models that make them easy to steal. In the fact that it wasn't a chase and it did go down the wrong way on a freeway and it did injure a child infuriates me. And the fact that this all comes down to the Kia's being so easy to steal and the fact that Kia has not done enough about it. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum recently joined a group of 22 other AGs asking Kia and Hyundai to take swift action to be accountable for their car's high rates of theft due to a lack of anti-theft immobilizers. Well, let's give you a live look over downtown Portland now. And yeah, safe to say the rain is coming down this Friday evening in what's promising already to be a very wet weekend. Meteorologist Chris McGinnis is in tonight. Chris, how much rain are we talking about here? Probably at least an inch uh, up and down most of the I-5 corridor, if not more than that. And, and the steadiest rain is falling this evening, but there will be some heavy showers dotting uh, the landscape here uh, tomorrow and probably Sunday as well. Here's a live scan at the radar. And again, the rain is on top of us right on schedule as we expected it would be. So a wet Friday evening commute up and down the I-5 corridor. The heaviest of the rain has yet to come ashore here. You see these yellows and oranges and reds uh, indicative of, uh, of a cold front that's offshore still uh, quite a ways offshore. And so all of this has yet to sweep through the region uh, late this afternoon and this evening, and it will. And then in the wake of that, we will get peppered with numerous showers, I think, going into the weekend. So with that being said, our rainfall tallies are pretty significant here. Up and down the I-5 corridor, future cast paint, paints more than an inch. Uh, and as we go up with the Cascades, those prolific amounts that you see up towards like rhododendron and, and Detroit and points higher, that will translate to snow. Big time snows in the Cascades. Winter storm warnings there and in the coast range. Snow levels could get as low as 1,000 to 1,500 feet, meaning travel to and from the beach this weekend, especially late tonight and overnight Saturday night into Sunday, is going to be uh, wintry. 48 last check at PDX. And oh, yeah, to go along with that rain, how about a little wind as well? Your full forecast comes up in a bit. Spring super soaker. Thank you, Chris. Now parts of the south and Midwest right now dealing with extreme weather with a series of tornadoes touching down in Arkansas. We've got video from the Little Rock area where a tornado left widespread damage and killed at least one person with two dozen more injured. Those minute numbers changing minute by minute. We also have some video that came in from Ali, Iowa. This is in the southeastern part of the state. Just look at the twister that was recorded there. The National Weather Service issuing tornado watches from Iowa all the way down to eastern Texas, affecting millions of people. NBC Nightly News is going to have an update on the damage and the ongoing watches and warnings. That's coming up at 530. Now to the indictment of former President Donald Trump. NBC News has learned he may be facing more than 30 fraud related charges and Associated Press sources report at least one of those charges is a felony. Court officials say Trump will be formally arrested and arraigned in New York next Tuesday. The investigation surrounds an alleged hush money payment to adult film star Stormy Daniels during the 2016 presidential campaign and how that payment was documented. The unprecedented case is drawing plenty of reaction across the political spectrum. They're trying to destroy Donald Trump because they fear him at the ballot box. This is a affirmation of the fact that no one should be above the law. Trump's attorneys have said there is no crime and they may try to get the case thrown out before it goes to trial. Former President Trump still faces separate investigations regarding classified documents and alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election.